Let's begin tonight by reminding you that cancer is one of the world's leading causes of death and its burden is growing exponentially. In 2021, the world crossed a sobering new threshold. An estimated 20 million people were diagnosed with cancer, out of which 10 million died. There are also possibilities that these numbers will continue to rise in the decades ahead. But one thing that is common is that all cancers can be treated and many can be prevented or even cured. Inyolu Akukola has details. Well, we'll bring you details of that story subsequently in the course of this bulletin, but let's talk to a senior specialist registrar, Department of Radiation Oncology in the Lagos University Teaching Hospital, Dr. R.J. Eben. Thank you for joining us on TVC News at this time. Thank you for having me. 10 million out of 20 million dead last year. I mean, how hopeful is the statement that cancer can be treated? Well, indeed, cancer can be treated. It's, um, it's not a death sentence, particularly when the patients present early in the hospital. Cancer at stage one, stage two can be treated. And it's interesting to know also that cancer is a preventable disease because there are agents, viral, bacterial uh, infections that are responsible for, for cancer ailments. Yeah. So when you have uh, vaccinable cancer diseases uh, like um, cancer of the cervix, for example, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, these are cancers that have vaccines. They can be treated, right? They can be prevented at the early stages. How come there's a vaccine for this one that has killed 20 million people? Last there, are, there are several cancers, I must understand that. Mm -hmm. And um, another, another reason that fuels this disease is the social habits that we have. S smoking, alcohol consumptions, then exposure to fumes, occupational hazards. So there are several cancers and there are several risk factors that are associated. And we just mentioned uh, CA cervix and hepatitis B and C. This is just like two of the several cancers that um, affect the, the human. Mm. So you're saying that if it's detected earlier, it can be treated. If it's preventable, that's the first stage. Then if talk it's, to us about the prevention first. Now, the pre prevention, for example, is that um, there are risk factors that are associated with cancer as a disease. There are the modifiable and the non-modifiable ones. Now, we look at the modifiable ones, for example. There is a change of lifestyle. If you're the kind of person who takes alcohol, you know, it's associated with some cancers. Uh, cigarette smoking, for example, is associated with some, some cancers. Some other cancers are associated with um, uh, 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 obesity. Now, if, if, we, if we, the regular exercises, you're disciplined about what to do, what you eat, and the kind of, uh, the kind of social habits you choose to imbibe, this can be prevented. Now, we must also understand that cancer itself is a genetic disease. There are genes that could be responsible for this. But this, and they are passed down from, the running families, they are passed down from one generation to another generation. Mm -hmm. And these are just 5 to 10%. So the 90% the, the, the are due to environmental factors, you know, that um, we expose ourselves to. So if at the level of the prevention, if you and I take it upon ourselves to to, pre, to, to discipline ourselves and watch the kind of social habits and the kind of kind of things we do, that's the first step in prevention. Now, if you're moving from prevention to early treatment, now when you notice the body is, is God made the body in such a way that the body has sensors. It tells you there's something wrong. Immediately you notice that there's something wrong in your body system, visit the hospital. So I lost my mother-in-law early last year to cancer. And I like the theme for this year, closing the care gap. Yeah. I must tell you for free that um, we're not doing very well in the public hospitals in this regard. You take a cancer patient to the hospital, I mean, she's condemned to die. I mean, you can see it on the faces of the caregivers. The attention they give to the person, it's like they're doing you a favor. You have to pay them. I mean, at some point it was during you know, one of the strikes by the doctors. It was a terrible experience. On top of the fact that your loved one is sick, and then you look, you read the mood, and you can tell that we're not doing a good job. How can we bridge this gap? And I'm not asking you to defend them, because it was something I saw on the first-hand basis. And my sympathy on the loss of your mother-in-law, but you must also understand that there are several factors in the care system. When a client, when a patient presents to the hospital at the late stages, even in the best of centers, in the most developed world, 
the best you could give to them is palliative care. Take care of their symptoms, manage them. Which should be given to you the day she breaks her last. She, she draws her last breath. Yes. You know, but you should also understand that at this end stage disease, end st stage state of the disease, there is little you could do aside from just more than that, you just palliating the patient, just managing symptoms and making sure that she has a comfortable stay. And if by transition she's going to transit, you know, to the great beyond, make it as comfortable and as painless as possible. Now, there are also a factor of manpower. When we're talking about closing the care gap, we're talking about closing the care gap vis-a-vis -vis government role, professional role, and the role of the members of the society. Now, the members of the society, their role is to make sure that they go for the regular testing, and when the body signals, you visit the hospital. The role of government is to make sure that there are more centers, more professional, more centers with good equipment to work with. Now, the role of a professional in, in uh, closing the care gap is to make sure that optimum care is given to the patients. Now, if with this tripod, if there is an imbalance in any of this, then you know that the patient who's involved is going to have some issues. We have to go now. Just one or two, three things you think people can do to prevent, you know, cancer. One, I would say that um, go for your regular medical checks. It's good when you're in your prime and you're functioning and life is of the top ebb for you but you should take it upon yourself to go for your medical checks. Mm. Then for preventable cancers, cancers that have vaccines, please let the people know that you could take, for example, the, the CA cervix, you know, it's a preventable cancer with adequate vaccination for the male child and the female child. This disease can be prevented, you know, and um, for diseases like hepatitis B, hepatitis C, I mean, these are cancers that have vaccines that can be prevented uh, with uh, adequate treatment, you know, of any medical condition, chronic medical illnesses, you know, there's a, it, it could be the, the more these illnesses stay in the body, then there's a greater likelihood from inflammations mm -hmm. that could transform into malignant illnesses. And the last point, please, I know the role of our pastors and our imams are important. When we have a health situation, please go to the hospital. Preferably, preferably a private hospital. <laughs> Both private go and <laughs> government hospitals. I'm just being mischievous. All right, uh, Dr. Aja Eben is the special, specialist registrar, Department of Radiation Oncology, Lagos University Chin Hospital. I'm told that we're coming back to this conversation, but let's bring in the details of the report uh, from a new Nua Wola. As Nigerians mark World Cancer Day, the focus is how to address the challenges associated with caring for those battling with cancer. Trained personnel and medical experts at this forum gave a breakdown of the most common types of cancer and the need to be more attentive to their health. So in this environment, when, we, when females or when anybody notices an abnormal growth, the first thing is to go to a health care center. I know that um, because of funds, because patients or individuals pay out of pocket, this may be a challenge uh, for so many people. But it is always health is wealth. When it comes to your health, you need to take, uh, put utmost priority on who to visit. You need to know who to complain to. While citizens lament on the poor access to health facilities, this medical personnel prefer solution to better care for persons at the grassroots. Once we're able to encourage and empower the primary care level of, of health care, I mean, they're closest, closest to the community. People easily go there, get information. They go into the community as well, mobilize them, and encourage them to come to the primary care centers when they have issues, when they, when they notice one, or one, two, or three um, of these symptoms. In, uh, bringing it back to health insurance, 70 to 80% of health care claims are basically primary health care. An actor and influencer, Effie Irele, was also present to contribute our own quota in helping to reach out to many Nigerians. A lot of filmmakers now, we're still doing some certain movies, having movies about rituals and this and that. Why not do something that's beneficial for everyone? Let's actually 
show real life problems, the things that affect our health, the things that affect our life. I think a lot of people of influence actually go, we choose different geographical areas and actually go into the marketplaces, actually go everywhere and decide, okay, gather a number of people. Because once you tell one person, that person will tell another person and tell another person. And that's literally how it works. World Cancer Death Erg puts about 10 million persons who die each year from cancer, with more than half of these deaths happening in the least developed parts of the world. This troubling data calls for more action from stakeholders and the community at large to help reduce stigma and ensure persons are well educated about this. In Niolua, Okwala, TVC News, Lagos. Dr. Eben is still right here with us in the studio. The figures in Nigeria are very um, damning. 72,000 cancer deaths each year with 102,000 new cases diagnosed. We have to go now. Talk to us about the lifestyle that we must embrace. I'm told that there are certain things we eat that also, you know, eventually lead to cancer. Yeah. Well, when we take too much of processed foods, mm. uh, the quick fixes, it's not good for our system. Low fiber diets, it's not good for our system particularly the GI cancers, the colon cancers. High fiber diet is good for, for us because it helps us to move our bowels on time and when we should. Um, we, we, I also need to emphasize that regular medical checks for the male at the age of 50, you should have your prostate checked and a simple blood test with the serum uh, PSA level will tell you what is going on in your prostate. And prostate happens to be the number one leading cause of death in men, yeah. on in, in, in black, black uh, Africa or African Americans. So it's important that you should go for your regular medical checks. When you're celebrating your birthday, this is what I advo advocate for my patients. When you're celebrating your birthday, out of the funds for the drinks and the pictures and the Oambe. That's if you have it. Yeah, well, yes, you have it. Most people have it, no matter how small. No, no, not yeah. most people. Well, there are more poor people in this country than those who can afford it. Fact. 20,000 naira. No, will do you, you know what they say about an average Nigerian living less than a dollar? Well, but I think, I think, um, I think that may, may, may not reflect the true situation when it comes to our health. Whatever we give priority to, we attend. Right. Mm -hmm. So instead of having that party and inv inviting friends and drinking and socializing, reserve some part of the money. You're saying with 20,000 error, the average Nigerian can do a proper Yes, you can do test. a proper, proper check on your health and you know how well you're doing. We have to leave it there. Dr. Ajay Eben, thank you so much for talking to us tonight. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Good.